Good evening, everyone. I'm Lizzie Bastian. It's Thursday, September 10th. Thanks for staying with us. The Ministry of Finance says there's no plans for any significant amount of hirings in the public sector. This according to Acting Financial Secretary in the Ministry, Marlon Johnson. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquest insisted that no cuts will be made to the public sector employment. In his Ministry of Finance COVID-19 update communication in the House of Assembly yesterday, he explained how the government is going to implement its fiscal and economic economic plan in response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and said the ministry is cutting non-essential expenditure allocations by 20 percent across all ministries. Meantime, Mr. Johnson assuring that the National Insurance Board, NIB, remains solvent even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. He says this as questions arose during a Ministry of Press conference yesterday on whether the government was concerned about the future of NIB during this difficult time. We can say categorically that NIB remains solvent. The, NI, the monies that, put on, that are contributed to NIB go into a, a reserve that is invested. So the NIB is properly capitalized. It produces its reports annually to speak to its capitalization. And this is what has allowed it to be able to weather a shock like this. He noted that in a given year, NIB would normally handle a few thousand applications for unemployment assistance, but this year ended up with over 30,000 in a very small period of time. Despite the influx of applications, he notes that NIB has been able to meet their commitments. Mr. Johnson assures that NIB monitors their expenditures and activities daily, and there is no concern there. As the global pandemic COVID-19 continues, more than 50% of global destinations are easing travel restrictions. However, caution remains, according to the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO. Now, while many remain cautious in view of the development of the pandemic, the seventh edition of the UNWTO COVID-19 related travel restrictions, a global review for tourism, confirms the ongoing trend towards the gradual research start of tourism. As of September 1st, the research carried out by the United Nations Specialized Agency for Tourism found that 115 destinations, which accounts for 53% of destinations worldwide, have eased travel restrictions as an increase of 28 since mid-July. UNWTO Secretary General Zurab Pololikashvili notes that coordinated leadership and enhanced cooperation between governments means that tourism is slowly but steadily restarting in many parts of the world. He further noted that the easing of restrictions on travel opens the doors for tourism's social and economic benefits to return. He adds that while countries must remain vigilant and cautious, the UNWTO remains concerned about those destinations with full ongoing travel restrictions, especially where tourism is a lifeline and economic and social development are under threat. Now, with that in mind, according to a Travel Zoo member survey, 40% of United States citizens would book a trip to the Caribbean in 2020, the earliest, but 67% would wait to travel until 2021. During a recent Ministry of Tourism press conference, Director General of the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and Aviation, Joy Gibberlew, revealed as much, noting that the survey, done mid-August 2020, travelers are more willing to travel if the bookings are changeable without fees or may be canceled with a full refund. According to the same survey taken by Travel Zoo in mid-August, the great news for us is that 46% and 49% of Americans and Canadians, respectively, are interested in traveling to the Caribbean. Next slide. The highest percentage for any region at this time. We actually also see a considerable amount of undecided travelers, and we know that they also provide an opportunity for us at tourism to convert them to travelers as well. When asked what market of people seem to be most willing to travel to the Bahamas, Ms. Jubilu had this to say. Data is showing us families, certainly in the holiday periods, they're the ones who are really keen on coming, but um, all our niche markets and by niche markets or vertical markets, diving, boating, 
fishing romance. They are trending very well. So persons who would enjoy these activities, private aviation obviously has been available from June 15th, and people have been able to come in, although when there were restrictions on inter-island travel, that impacted those um, for the moment. But we think leading up to Thanksgiving and certainly Christmas, we can expect to see families coming back. And I think one of the slides that Minister shared, that people are really very happy about taking a COVID test and the protocols that are in place, they feel that it ensures safety for them and their families. And so they're comfortable and confident in bringing families to enjoy all that we have to offer here. Minister of Tourism Denisio de Aguilar during that press conference said he remains optimistic and hopes that the tourism figures can return to pre-COVID-19 numbers within 18 to 24 months. While the Ministry of Health yesterday confirmed 64 additional cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number to 2,721, 55 of those cases here in the capital, two in Grand Bahama, three in Crooked Island and Inagua each, and one in Mayaguana. There's now 1,780 confirmed cases on New Providence, 591 on Grand Bahama, 95 on Abaco, 54 on Bimini, 23 on Exuma, 16 on Inagua, 15 confirmed cases on the Berry Islands, eight in Cat Island, Eleuthera, and Long Island each, seven in Acklands, five in Cricket Island, three in Andros and Mayaguana each, and 105 confirmed cases with locations pending. So far, there's been 1,183 recovered cases, 1,457 active cases, 69 of which are hospitalized, 63 deaths, eight non-COVID-related deaths, and 10 under investigation. You're watching JCN News. When we return, it's the peak of the hurricane season. A man is charged with murder and it's Suicide Prevention Day. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.